Okay, this is my second attempt at building a superheater from my Jensen 75. The first one was just a straight pipe that went down along the top of the burner, up at the back and out. This one does a, a loop, goes around on top of the burner, then back up. So um, the object is twofold. First, to see whether I can build an effective superheater or not. And second, to uh, see if it does any good on an engine this size. Other than making it look hideously ugly, of course. So we'll fire it up and be right back. Okay, we're just gearing up for our first run. Burner's going well. Pressure's getting up. It's got the engine idling so it stays warm. Tack going. That's reasonable. Just want a few more PSI. Alright, let's open it up and see what happens. Just dipping below 3,000 RPM right now. Going down to almost 10 PSI. Still over 2,000 RPM. I'd just like to see where it's going to level off. Okay, continuing where we left off, we just want to see where the engine maintains its speed. Maintains over 2,000 RPM. or close to it. Without the superheater we were more like uh, 1800 I believe. And we're running at only about 6 pounds pressure. Just below 2000 RPM. Yeah it flickers every now and then. Okay, we'll reverse it, refill the burner, and try the other direction now. Okay, we're just about to start our second trial. We're in reverse now, which is the slower direction for this particular engine. Pressure's about where we want it. So we'll get this fiddly little tachometer working. Okay. 
Okay. That seems to be stable. Alright, let's open it up. This track is a lot more fussy for positioning than the old one was. I was still over 2,000 RPM. I'll just slow down the engine a bit and let it build up to uh, a steady speed. almost 1900 RPM. That's a slight improvement, I believe. Well, that's about it. Here, I just hooked up my repaired chicken feed burner to uh, test to see how it lugs under load. Maintaining pretty decent pressure, but I noticed one thing right off is uh, this sleeve that covers my old uh, oiler port, it's leaking. So, here's a tip. If you're making one of these, you better silver solder your entire line. Because at first this joint was leaking, this was soft soldered, this was silver soldered. This is where the superheater joins the original Jensen line. And everything beyond this is soft soldered as well. And what I think has happened is the vibration of running at such a high speed has uh, conspired to break my joints here. So I'm going to have to take this apart again, clean this up, and just silver solder the whole thing. Anyway, this burner is still proving to be quite fussy to feed. You cannot just open this tap up and let the fuel run free, or it will overflow. You have to watch the bubbles going through the return line and sort of gauge their travel and judge for yourself how much fuel you have to feed into this thing. Anyway, that's about it for tonight. I think the superheater has some effect. I don't know if it's worth uh, the trouble of building one and ruining the resale value of your engine down the road, but it's an interesting experiment. Take care. Good night, all.